Have you ever known you're right? You know you're right and you just don't know why you're right? Well, I got a subscriber who sent me plans. Her husband wants to build them. They look fabulous. She knows something's wrong with them. She sent them to me to tear them apart and that's what we're gonna do today. Now, I know nothing about this woman. I know nothing about her family, the number of children she has, where she lives, or any of that. That's a big part of how I make decisions for a design. But these plants suck without even considering them. I wanna show you how I go through plants and how I see if they work, how I think about the layout. Does it work? Where am I gonna put stuff? And how are we gonna move through that? Come on, let's go. This is the contemporary 3D version. Darker color, the stone. It's got casement windows, which are gonna be stationary, and it looks like they've got a little tip-out awning panel here. This is a clear story window, as are these here, which means this is a two-story height. This is a two-story height here for the living room. This is one of two garages. Here we have second version, just changing the cosmetics, putting a different dress on, white with double hung windows, with the white vertical siding. What else we got? A lighter roof color, so it gives it a little bit more of an airy feel. No stonework. Okay, let's get to the good part. So here you can see, here's the second garage. That first garage, that's what we're seeing right here. That's the first garage. That's this right here. The portico, that's that. And then we come into the main space. All right, so let's start from the entry. Remember, there's the entry here. So we're going up and in. We walk into a wall. Not ideal that it's that close, but I like that it's blocking off the kitchen and it gives you a little bit of privacy from the family space stops your eye from seeing what's going on. It also stops if there's any view out to the backyard, but it gives you privacy from Amazon at the front door and also gives you privacy because there's an office here and they have another entrance. So this, this reads to me like someone who works from home. It's got a side separate entrance, someone who sees clients, maybe me, this would be a nice setup. However, if you were to use it this way, the stairs to the children's bedrooms, which we'll see next, are right here, which means you're giving strangers access to the most private part of your house. So I'm not crazy about that. But that's a consideration if that's how you're using the office. It kind of appears that way set up. We've got a coat closet off the entry. That's good. See the coat closet here? All right, now we come into the great room. It is 14 by 22, but it's got a bump out of a fireplace here. So that's gonna eat up about 22 inches into the room. And then we've got a kitchen. It's 12 by 19. So the 19's this way, the 12 is this way. Two for the cabinets. Let's call it three and a half, so we're at five and a half. I'm, I'm doing 42 inches clearance. That's the bare minimum. So we're at five and a half. This looks to be, if that's two feet, this looks to be four feet. We're at nine and a half feet off of the 12, which means they've only allowed two and a half feet for the stools on this side of the island over here for clearance, which means that lost two feet has now lost another two and a half feet. So four and a half feet off of that, do the math, that's what? So get real numbers when you're, when you're looking at these plans so you can buy furniture that really fits. Okay, on to the kitchen. We've got a sink and a dishwasher. Let me zoom this in a little. There we go. So we've got a sink, dishwasher, window here. Pass through a doorway to the game room, mudroom, laundry beyond, and the pantry back here. Two doors to the pantry. One this way, one that way. So it's a big loop. Um, what can we say about that? So many things. Um, six by 12 pantry is lovely. However, you've lost all of this wall space or all of this wall space when you have two, and in this case, when you have two doors. I get the idea you want to have access from both sides, but 
A pantry is storage. A scullery is working. This is, make the kitchen bigger. Make a, a corner pantry over here and have cabinetry and move this island back and give that room back to the great room. That would work better for me. While we're in the kitchen, let's take a little down the hallway to the game room, 13 by 16, good size. It has a closet underneath the stairs there, so it could also technically count as a, a fourth bedroom, fifth bedroom in this house. This hallway's a lot of wasted space. You know, there's not much going on. I guess the garage is here, so the mudroom, you've got to come out the garage and you've got to go all the way back here and in. Now, to me, that doesn't matter because it's always warm where I am now. But if I live somewhere cold, I want the door to the garage and the door to the house not to be so involved in snow drifts and coldness. Mudroom, nine by six. So you've got two feet of cabinetry. You've got four feet in here to walk. It's generous. That's great. But it's not big enough to do shelves on, on the other side. This hallway, just, I mean, let's say this is six... This is seven, and so, so what are we, that's 13, six, 13, and let's call it 10. Just 23 by three, you do the math on that. That's like 75 square feet. That is a bedroom, a small one. It's an office for sure. It's something. This is a lot of real estate wasted on the patio. I mean, if it's a gallery room, great, but the only one going to it is someone doing the laundry or going to the garage, so not, the best layout. I might flip the game room and the laundry room. Have the game room take up the entire space. It would have windows on three sides. Wouldn't that be lovely? Way at the back of the house so the kids are making noise and you don't hear them. They can sneak in and out when they get older. Then the laundry and mudroom has a better, you know, put the mudroom somewhere over here. Laundry behind the kitchen. Lovely. So I'm doing dishes while I'm doing laundry and I can get to the mechanicals and all of that can, can vent right out. I hate a laundry room that does not vent directly outside because dryer fires, if you ask any fireman, will tell you are one of the number one causes of fires in a home. If they are vented directly outside, there's a lot less real estate for that hose to get clogged up. Flipping these two would greatly improve that. Putting the game room at the back of the house makes a lot more sense to me. Having the mudroom, the laundry, and all of that centrally located where I'm working. You're always working in the kitchen, working there in the morning, working there in the evening. It gets laundry done. It gets stuff not left in the washing machine that you got to rewash because you forgot about it because the laundry is so far away from everything else. Okay, on to the great room. I talked about the sizes. Not great. Let's go to these two first floor bedrooms. This one, 12 by 10, it's got a closet, two windows here and a window in the corner here. Now, this really limits where you can put a bed. You can put a bed underneath the windows, but if I lived in a cold climate, that would not be my first choice. We could separate these windows and put them on the corner so that you could put a bed in the middle, but this is a 12 by 10 room. So on this side wall, 12 by 10, this is 10 feet. If this is a two foot window and a bed and room to get into the closet, you can only have a twin sized bed in this room. If that's your objective, great. If not, I would rework this whole area and we'll get to you know where we can make this a little bit more manageable. There's all this space here the closet and the door here limit, you know, putting a bed on this wall because you walk in and hit the bed, that's bad chi. This doesn't, it, it doesn't work. The master doesn't work either. I would rework this entire side here. The layout kind of stinks. Let's go on to the master bedroom. Hmm. 14 by 13, not a bad size. I would prefer that these windows were pushed to the edges so that you had options to put the bed on this back wall as well as on this wall. They've got a fireplace here. Eh. Fireplace in the bedroom. Where do you live? That depends. That's a big depends. Let's move this over a little bit so we can see it better. Shrink it down. All right, so and the master bedroom 
I would split the windows again to give me more choices where the bed goes. 13 by 19 this room is. That's ridiculous. Toilet room right as you come in. So if I'm sleeping right here and my husband gets up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, I put it right next to my head? No thank you. Move the toilet away from the bed. As far away from the bed as you possibly can. Move it down. Vanity, double sinks, and a wet room. Come on. You are not cattle. Move on. You will freeze your ass off in there. The fixtures are always wet and have spots on them on the tub. The tub doesn't sparkle because it's always got watermarks. And most importantly, it is such a big space that you will never be warm in your shower. That's why they put a, sh a sauna in next door. I, I don't know. I'm going to skip the sauna. It's a no. No. Wet rooms are no... <laughs> Unless you're washing dogs or cattle, I would suggest a beautiful shower and a lovely standalone tub. Here is the power room. Oh, this is a full bath. We've got a shower, toilet, and a sink. It's right off the great room. It's right off the master. But the master has its own, or primary, has its own bathroom. So what the heck is this? If anything, this should be opening closer to this, this poor room with the small, poorly placed windows. So this is, this is eh. This is wrong. So we go in, more hallway. I get you want separation from the great room to the primary bedroom, but this is a waste of space. And then this walk-in closet, let's look. It's 11 by nine, but it's not really because you've got this bump out here, makes it weird to hang clothes. There's too much room in the middle, too much Superman changing and not enough room for Superman's capes. Upstairs we go, and I like the way this builder laid out this plan. So you can see the overlay of underneath it. You can see the, the first floor plan. So that's nice. You can get an idea of where things are falling. So when you refer back to here, here's where we're going up here to this window. My first problem with the second floor. As you walk in this front door here, you'd be walking down the hallway. This is what's called a clear story. So this is open to below. How are you going to clean that window? This clear story is a major feature and it's hidden back here. Only the people that use the side door are going to get a, a view of the beautiful window and whatever lovely chandelier that's going two stories is spanning down there. You're not going to see it from the entry hall, which is way over here. You might get a little peek of it. If you look down there, you'll see light, but you're not getting the full effect. All right, let's get upstairs anyway. So we're coming up the stairs and we have this nice big space and two doors right opposite the stairs to go down. This is tremendously bad chi and it's a bad idea if you're a parent. Kids come running out of their bedroom Christmas morning, they're gonna fly down there and you're gonna spend it in the emergency room. The ambulance is racing. You do not wanna line up doorways with the top of stairs. She's speeding to the scene. Walk-in closet six by five. The door not centered on both closets limits your storage space. So I could make a U shape of storage if they just centered that door and have a true walk-in. Right now I have a door landing on a wall. That doesn't do me two and a half feet of good. If you double that for hanging space, that's five linear feet that is lost behind a closet door because the door's not centered. Toilet. 12 by 6. You've got a 6 foot vanity, probably a 5 foot tub that got a wall in between and the toilet here. Anybody who knows when you've gone to the bathroom or used the tub and they are side by side, it is not convenient. It's not convenient to clean it. It's not convenient to bathe children. Turn the tub the long way, put the toilet here. So we have 6 foot vanity, 3 feet for toilet, 3 feet for tub. Fits fine and it's a generous 6 foot space for mom or dad to sit on the floor and bathe the kids. Much better layout. However, this entire second floor would be better suited to be flipped. And here's the other reason. This is vaulted. This is that clear story we see here. It's vaulted all the way up. So this is a child's bedroom here. The noise coming from the living room, if you're entertaining and the kids have gone to bed, this is a piece of sheetrock and some two by fours and maybe some insulation if you're smart, but the noise and the echo in this space is ridiculous. Subscribe! <laughs> I would suggest 
flipping and having the two bedrooms here, the bathroom back here, that would bring the staircase more centrally located, moving the staircase here. So when I walk in, I've got a two-story view of the stairs. That would be magnificent. Is that it for upstairs? I think that's it. Good luck with the husband. For everybody else out there, if you're looking at plans to buy online, do not assume that they did a good job. Sometimes these online plans are a nice, easy way to start, but they're never right. So you've got to take them to a draftsman or an architect in your area to get them up to date for codes and whatever might be local to you. And in that process, change the plans, make them work for you. Look at the numbers and see if they make sense. Don't look at the pretty pictures. Look at how it works. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. The ambulance is racing. She's speeding to the scene.